Making the Jump, a video series on innovations in digital higher education. I'm your host, Justin Hassan, and in today's bonus episode, uh, I want to talk about bringing digital creativity and digital literacy sort of practices into the online space. We're all making this transition from face-to-face -face learning to online learning as a part of the current uh, efforts to stem the spread of the coronavirus. Most universities have transitioned from the face-to-face -face space to the online space. One of the things we keep forgetting is that uh, we're going to lose a lot of creative engagement, right? I think uh, I think a lot of folks are going to just move to straight textual-based exchanges. The most prominent metaphor that operates for thinking about how online learning works or has worked is a filing cabinet metaphor where, you know, I put something in the filing cabinet and students take it out, they complete it, they put it back in the filing cabinet, I take it out, I grade it. That's sort of how asynchronous models have worked for a long time. Uh, and those aren't necessarily bad things, but they're also not necessarily great things. I think some of the best online learning, online classes have designed learning experiences and not file exchanges. And so uh, not task exchange. And so the question is, how do we do that? How do we find ways to uh, create more engagement with our students and their, their, their content processes and the work they have remaining in class. And I, I know a lot of us are just trying to survive and we're gonna go with the bare bones approach and just try and get through the end of the semester. But I'm gonna give you at least two things to consider uh, for how you might add some really enriching kind of things uh, to your classroom experience. The first one is to think about the kind of content you're providing. And I've done a lot of work uh, uh, recently in this uh, Making the Jump space, but also on other sites about using video and how do you um, how do you use video to engage students in the in course content? How do you make your videos more dynamic, more um, you know, more involved, adding titles and adding text and adding images and exporting your PowerPoint slides and putting them into the, the video or or embedding videos within video and creating multiple track editors and those kinds of things using the Adobe Rush as well as the Zoom to Adobe Rush workflow, which I've talked about in episode two. Um, but you might also think more strategically about what if you didn't make a video, right? What if students don't want to watch you talk every time about all the content? How would you deliver content to them without video? And a lot of folks are going to just turn on their LMS or open up their LMS, and they're going to start typing in one of the pages or text boxes to create this kind of engagement. And while some of the LMS systems out there allow you to embed images and video and do a number of fun things, um, not all of them work as seamlessly and as easily as they should, and not all of them are, are, are going to be transferable elsewhere. So something I've been encouraging folks to think about is, if I have to deliver a static form of course content, what if I create an Adobe Spark page for that instead? Um, if you don't know, Adobe Spark is a three-part uh, suite, right? It's got Adobe Spark Post, Adobe Spark Page, and Adobe Spark Video. Adobe Spark Post creates short little images, um, or not, creates images for social media distribution, but also just for sharing in general. You can download them, you can send the URL, and all, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, Adobe Spark Page creates a scrolling digital uh, page online, right? It's a live living uh, document that's online and Adobe Spark video is a way of creating voiceover basic voiceover videos uh, using images and text on screen um, they all have their purposes their learning curve is incredibly low but more importantly they live online they're free for anyone to use now the reason why I encourage you to think about using an Adobe Spark page for course content that's going to be static text-based content is because a uh, it's more visually dynamic uh, B it's auto responsive uh, so which means that if a student's viewing it on their computer or on their phone it auto resizes to fit the phone and, and it keeps everything in nicely clean looking design order uh, three it allows you to embed images and text and videos all together uh, to offer something of a multimedia experience rather than just a text-based experience or sometimes the flattened experience that happens in Canvas. And four, and this is perhaps most important, it's an online living document. And so it's saved online. You might log in later and, and update the content. Maybe you want to re reframe something. Maybe you want to add a new element to it. And you can just make the changes and hit update the link, and it will save it again on, at the same URL online. So you can continually update the document. And if you take the time to create this media element now as a Spark page instead of a page in Canvas, for example, then uh, it'll be live as long as you need it, you can reuse it in every class. And if your university decides to switch from say Blackboard to Canvas or Canvas to Blackboard, or whatever the tools were out there right now, um, you don't have to recreate the content in the new system. You can just put the link into the new system. So it, it has a lot of strategic affordances, um, but it's a nice way of adding uh, sort of a, an experiential kind of element, a media-based experience to the course content without necessarily just having a talking head video. And truth be told, you can make a talking head video and then embed it inside of a Spark page to share with your students so they go, you know, title, you are talking about it, course content, course strategies, images, infographics, well, whatever the case may be. Maybe you're doing a critical reading of a text. You can take an image of the text page and put it right into the system. You can make a video of yourself go walking through 
uh, the, the close reading and, and guide them through the steps and then embed that into a larger context of a Spark page. But it's a really, it's, a, it's an instructional tool uh, in this context to add a, lo a little bit of liveliness and engagement to the process and, and, re and make sure that the artifact remains stable and transferable with you uh, wherever you, you want to take it. But you can also use this for student work. So instead of having them write traditional sort of flattened text only essays and short responses, you might invite them to think about working in Adobe Spark page as a form of the course assignment. Um, again, the URL can embed, you can stick uh, Spark pages in, inside of Canvas in, in a variety of ways, among other sort of platforms to think about. Uh, but it's a, it's a nice option to give students so that we don't feel just because we moved online that we've become only a text-based text exchange kind of thing. And there's nothing wrong with text. They're still text dominant, don't get me wrong, um, in these platforms, but it's just an option to put on the table. Uh, as a part of the Adobe Spark suite though, I also encourage folks to think about using Adobe Spark Post. Um, something I do in my classes pretty regularly is I'll say, you know, uh, a think pair share activity. If you know what these active learning strategies are, I, I call it think pair make share. So I have them take a minute thinking about the text that we read. I have them write down some ideas that really stood out to them. And they partner up and they share their ideas. And then I have them make a Spark post that represents that idea or that conveys it. And they use text and image to do this. And then I invite them to share those with me so I can talk about them, uh, talk about the course reading through base, basically through the images that they've created. Now, that flattens a little bit in the online space, but you might invite the same kind of response to, to a text, have a student create a Spark post in response to the text and then have them explain that post and how it relates to the reading um, or how it responds to the course content or the course ideas as a way of adding a little bit of visual dynamic uh, dynamism to the overall experience. So they don't just uh, feel lost in a sea of every day logging into to, to the new, to the canvas or Blackboard or whatever they're working from and going through the same textual based practices with every class and every system. I got a quiz, I got a short response, I got to do X, right? Um, it's all flat, it's all words. And there's nothing wrong with words, don't get me wrong, right? But um, but just taking a moment to add an option or give them this, this different kind of mode can really enhance the, the overall, I think, experience of your class. So those are some basic strategies. The other one, the, the second set would be to think about the role of video for students or audio for students and invite them to uh, maybe instead of doing short written responses uh, or short image responses to maybe create a, a video response or vlog, if you will, uh, in terms of the course content, the reading, the engagement, the ideas, um, to take two, three minutes uh, you know, limit them so you don't have to spend a ton of time. You don't want to spend 20 minutes watching one student work, right? Because it's that's a bigger project than what we're after. But you might say you got uh, 90 seconds uh, to demonstrate some engagement with a class in video form. Um, and they might use Adobe Spark Video to create these little voiceover talking in there, voiceover uh, image based engagements. Or they might turn on, you know, their, uh, their camera on their phone and record that. And then they can pull that into Adobe Rush, for example, and edit it or uh, any number of other editing platforms. Um, to again convey this information and again the goal here is not to think about how do I add more work to my plate but maybe how might I add a little bit of dynamic uh, energy to the classroom through digital creativity digital literacy these sort of more visually oriented or multimedia based practices of engagement um, because again as we move online everything's going to get flattened to the basic common denominator and in the online space right now that is text and so the, uh, it's a driving tool it's, a it's an effective tool but it's not the only tool available to us. So you might think about expanding your option to include things like Adobe Spark Page, Adobe Spark Post, Adobe Spark Video, or Adobe Rush as a part of a video workflow for not only the kind of teaching you do and the way you deliver content, deliver content, but the kind of engagements you're inviting students to do as a, as a way of demonstrating their, their understanding of content or their, their uh, involvement in your course ideas and course practices. So those are, that's the short spiel today in this bonus episode. Um, uh, again, if you have questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me, uh, email me at hotson at indiana.edu, um, or you can follow me on Twitter at, at postdigitaljh, or you can, again, find all this material on my website at justinhotson.com. Or if you really just want to know when we release episodes of The Jump and you're making The Jump and you're curious about this video series, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the best way to, to get access to this material and be notified when new things drop. Otherwise, stay safe out there, wash your hands, uh, and good luck as you uh, all sort of find ways to transition to the online space. Um, and take a chance and, and test out some of these tools. They're really easy to use and students find them relatively engaging.